And so the first question that I'm going to address here, I will just um, identify the question. So uh, someone asks about how teachers who are starting out in this process can, how they actually begin to engage, to build an environment that encourages um, inclusive education, inclusive practices. And the second question following that is how parents, uh, the experience of parents being um, a disruption to the process almost, and how teachers might be able to work with that. So the first question, I'll, I'll start with the first question. Um, for, for people who are starting out, uh, teachers who are starting out to engage, and you have already started, the question you ask is, how can I begin? If you think around, if you begin to think already about there is something wrong with this system, if every child cannot be in my classroom, any child cannot be in my classroom for any other reason than that maybe their chronological age is still young, they shouldn't be in that class. Um, but if it's about their disability, um, the ability to cope with the system, then it is not right. You already started. It starts from your mindset. So once you're, you have a mindset that says, I need to do something to include all children, you've already started. So you're no longer a rookie teacher. That's what you need to know. The journey has started for you. Now, beyond that, looking at physical assets, um, looking at attitudes, how do you get yourself as a teacher that is starting out in the political wrong or the ladder of leadership? You're probably not up there. So you're thinking, how can I begin to engage? Start with your space. Start with your classroom. When you're in that class, the way you work with the children is important. The child that you have, the child you work with, that child with a disability in your classroom, the way you work with that child is important. That is your starting point. People often think about the global, reaching people globally. It often starts with one teacher and one child. You become an example of what you want to, what you want to do. You become an example of it. You start by learning. Um, last time we talked about Google being a very useful resource. There are courses like this, this one you've attended now, giving you some level of idea and expertise about what to do. And I want to make it clear, first of all, that you do not need to be trained as a special education teacher to work with a child with a disability. Because even special education teachers or special needs teachers often have to negotiate with what actually happens in the environment of teaching and learning. There is no rule book. So you are not disadvantaged by not having a kind of specialized training. You actually do not need to have one. Now, I'm not taking away the need for you to get additional training as you go along. If there's an opportunity to learn more about the condition of a particular child in your class, use that opportunity by all means. But do not think that limits you. So what I need you to do is to think around, how do I become that example? the way you work with the child. How do I approach the learning for this child? Every child is different, and you will engage with every child differently. One of the students, one of the participants here talked about Barbara, I liked what she said, she talked about creativity and resolve. She gave a positive experience of how they work in their schools, and that stood out for me. For people who are starting out, you've got the resolve already. For you to ask this question, you've got the resolve already. Now you need to add in some creativity, which is the one-on-one -on -one that I'm talking about. So if you're working with your student, if you're working in a class of children with differing abilities, but you believe and you have the resolve that this child might not learn at the pace of every other child in this class, but this child can learn, then some creativity needs to be called in. The curricula is given to you, and sometimes the curricula will not accommodate as much as you realize that it needs to. The assessment of that within the curricula might not be suitable for that child, and it might not be fair, so to speak, based on the abilities of that child. Then it calls on you to be creative, and how do you do that? I almost think that advocacy goes hand in hand with it, but advocacy can be a scary word when you're starting out. But remember that advocacy is as simple sometimes as what you do and how you do it. And that's it brings me back to it. Connecting to schools and other teachers who know, who have practiced, who have experience in, in the area you're interested in is very key. It will give you the moral support. It will let you realize that you are not alone. 
that other people are doing it. And in week six, more of this will be explored. How you will connect to all the all the experiences around you, all the people who are around you who know what they are doing, who have done it before, how you connect to departments and available resources. There are available resources within your context that you can use. So we would like to encourage you to do that. So don't despair. You already started on your journey. All you need to do is continue and reach out for support and you will definitely make a difference. The second question raised is around parents as barrier and how do you negotiate that when a parent will not see the value in the education that um, their children have. I, again, I can only speak from my context um, and it's different for every context. But generally, I would like to think that most parents would want their children to achieve and attain whatever they, they set their mind to. And being a support in this process is what every parent would want. But we need to take note of the fact that a lot of parents are scared. A lot of them are unsure, uncertain about what role they would play. If a teacher who is trained to, or might not be trained, but in the special needs sector, but you are trained to teach and work with children, um, Teachers still get a bit worried when children with disabilities are introduced into their mainstream classrooms. And one of the reasons being, I'm not equipped to deal with this. Now, neither is a parent prepared exactly to deal with what they are seeing. And various reactions might come out before they begin to adjust and understand. So there's a need to be a bit empathetic around this process. Um, some parents do not get their questions answered. Uh, some, question, some parents have so much questions, they are on a learning curve themselves, and sometimes they don't see where they fit in. So pointing out to them where they fit in, where they can support their child, can be very helpful. It also speaks to the idea of the mindset. It also brings together the idea of looking like in the first week, Roy um, talked about inclusion on a global scale. It also looks at all the complexities involved um, around this concept of inclusive education. The role of the parent is not easy, um, neither is the role of the teacher. It's a very complex situation. But if we begin to see that these role players can contribute and begin to say, why, why are they not contributing? It's not because they do not want their children to attain and achieve, but sometimes it is their own perceptions, their own worries, and their own sense of inability to support their child in this almost specialized area as education is often seen. But when you open that up and have an open conversation with the parent and begin to build trust, then the conversations will begin to come out. And they might point out, these are my issues, this is why I'm unable to respond, this is why I have not been very supportive. Now, I'm not saying that this applies to everyone, but it is a place to start from, to begin to engage and talk with parents. Even when they do not see the value, maybe point out the value, point out where they can support. In my context, you have parents who have not been to school. That is an extra challenge because then they do not know what this is all about. But you see, take them in and you talk to them. And this is very helpful. I'm sure that some creativity will be needed by you in your own context. But that is the whole point of education for all. If it was a straightforward, linear, vertical process, everybody would jump on it. But it is a bit harrowing sometimes. It is a lot of work, a lot of confusion, a lot of complexities. But we do it because we believe in it. And we know we have the resolve to go on and commit to it. So well done on these questions. Mm -hmm.